Uh, take your Bible, turn to Revelation chapter 5. Oh, listen. If you get a hold of what this Bible says about what's in God's right hand. Now, I can't, it's, it's been a long week. I can't remember, I remember some of the things that we talked about already. Um, so yeah, some of this, I might as well just start right here. I know we did this one. So I'll just start right here, but let's read uh, the first part of Revelation 5. Uh, I saw in the right hand of him, we've talked about that, why is the right hand? So on, that's where the power is, the strength is, the glory is, that's where Christ is. Right now, when you pray to Christ, he is at his Father's right hand interceding for us. And let me make a let me make a point of something, okay? These people who try to get by with praying, um, our our dear God, we thank thee for this, that, thou, and the other, and uh, uh, thank you for giving us life, love, and health. We ask your blessings on this day. Amen. And what's wrong with that prayer? Huh? There's no what? Well, that's true. That's true, too. Why can't you cash it? Whose signature belongs on it? There you go. Okay, I was getting that. I was hoping you were going there. But you cannot reach the holy God in heaven by yourself and without Christ. It is impossible. Can't do it. When God spoke to the Israelites from Mount Sinai, how many of you think, how many of you think they lost their bowel contents? Practically every one of them. Uh, they were hearing the voice of what the Bible describes a terrible God. That doesn't mean he's like Freddy Krueger or anything like that. It's just that we are so lowly and God is so high and mighty that the sight of him, the voice of him, the presence of him in man is sort of like... Um, Sort of like a, what a mouse sees you in the kitchen. What do they do? They go running. Okay? And that's, what, that's who God is. We cannot approach Him. So the, the bottom line is, the Israelites showed us this by saying to Moses, Moses, from now on, tell God, Quit talking to us. We can't take this voice. We can't take, we cannot handle this. From now on, you go and you get from God what he wants us to hear. And then you come and tell us what he said. But from now on, we don't want to hear that voice anymore. That's how terrible the voice of God was. So God arranged it so that Moses, and, and of course Moses, as far as Moses got, was just the backside of God. That's, that's as far as he got, as far as seeing God. 
God always hid in a cloud or in darkness. The Bible, I can't remember where I read it the other day, but they, uh, God showed up in thick darkness. And that thick darkness was there to hide his presence. Because he knows that his presence in front of man slays him. Boom. Dead. So anyway, uh, that's why Christ is at the right hand. He is the mediator for us. And when you pray, you pray in Jesus' name. Well, some of my family are Jewish, and I, I don't care. You're not praying to them. Pray for them. But don't try to pray without Christ being the mediator. Pray in Jesus' name. Now I'll get off that, and I'll get back on the... Because that's what he's doing there at the right hand of the Father. He is, he is bearing our prayers to his father if we ask anything in his name he gives it to us amen amen now um so anyway i saw in the generate revelation 5 i saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals and we saw the uh, the similarities between that and the Ten Commandments, they were both written on both sides. Uh, the ones that Moses got were written on the both, both sides so that nothing could be added and nothing could be taken away. But the significance of the right hand, uh, I'm still throwing this at you because then we're going to pick up the significance of the book. And to me, you guys know me, there is nothing, there is absolutely nothing more important to you in this life than your Bible. I have my grandmother on videotape. Um, and she was talking, of, and this was just not too many years uh, before she died. But she was talking about uh, a photographer or something like that. Or one of her Sunday school class members was telling her about somebody that uh, would take your picture holding your Bible. And she said, I thought that was nice that, you know, did that. My grandmother had a Bible and I have it. I, I, I end, my, after my uncle died this past year. They found it in my aunt's stuff, and they said, Mike needs this. And I just cried and bawled. To my grandmother, the Bible meant everything. Uh, I know to my mom, the Bible meant everything. To me, my sister, the Bible means everything. To, to hopefully everybody here, the Bible means everything. Okay, I've got a house full of stuff that I can't even touch. You see this shirt? It's the only one that I've got for a while. Okay, now there are some upstairs. I just don't like the color of some of them. But anyway, um, but I've still got the Bible. I've still got the word of God. Psalm 98, 1, O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. Psalm 108, verse 6, that thy beloved may be delivered, save with thy right hand. How does God save us? With his right hand. What's in his right hand? The Bible. Who, who's at his right hand? Jesus Christ. You see how it works? It's, it all works together. Christ, the Bible, in God's right hand, saves us. If those two are not there, can't be saved. Uh, Psalm 110, 5. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Let me, let me show you something. 
Um, turn to Second Thessalonians. Turn to Second Thessalonians. That's what that sounds like. Do that. There you go. Oh, I like that sound. You know what that is? You know what that's the sound of? It's the sound of revival. Second Thessalonians 2. Um, if you look, let's start in verse 6. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked, notice capital W, that's a person, be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. What is the spirit of his mouth? It's his words. The words that he says. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. What is the, what is the Bible? It's a lamp. And it's a, how did Gideon get his enemies to flee? He broke the pitchers that had lamps in them. And as soon as they did that, all of those guys that were down in that camp, you know, Gideon and his 300 men were on the hillside surrounding them. And all those guys down in the camp are going, oh, no, because they were probably like thinking there's probably 30,000 people for every one of those lamps out there. And they fled like little chickens. Okay? Or mice. That was our thing from a while ago. Uh, the voice of... Uh, that, yeah. The voice... The, uh, back to Psalm 110.5. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Uh, let me show you another verse. Turn to Revelation 19. I think that's probably the one I've really wanted. Revelation 19. Battle of Armageddon. Battle of Armageddon. Verse 11. Oh, I like that sound. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. In righteousness. His eyes were as a flame of fire and his head were crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood and his name is called what? Buddha? Mohammed? Michael Jackson? No, the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. I believe that's us. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That's the spirit of his mouth we read about in 2 Thessalonians. And with it he should smite the nation. See that? That's exactly what we said here. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He's smiting nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Somebody say amen. Psalm 18, verse 15. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth Valiantly. He says it twice there. Why? Because number one, it's a sword with two edges. Number two, it's a book with two testaments, old and new. It's got two witnesses in it, old and new. That's why you have it in there twice, I believe. Now, Psalm 138, 7. Though I walk in the midst, listen to this now. This is where I am. This is where some of you are. 
That's where some of you are online. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. You ever been in trouble? I'm not even talking about being in trouble as a child. I'm talking about being in trouble as an adult. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. I'm thinking seriously tonight, and I don't have notes for this at all, but I, can, I might be able to put them together. You know, I believe that practically every sin that you committed and I, I'm not saying 100% but the devil set a trap for you to do it a snare oh, he dug a pit for you to fall in that's what he does who who showed up before Eve ate that fruit. Before she ate the fruit, she was living the luxurious life in the Garden of Eden. And the devil set a trap for her. Baited her. Okay? What's a hook? It's a snare. Okay? Bait that hook. My dad uh, was a good catfisher guy. He used to lay out trot lines. Who knows what trot lines are? Yeah. Laid out. He, him and mom laid out a trot line one night out of Lake Kincaid down in Illinois. And the next morning they went to, to pull it up. And they were pulling that trot line up. And as it got toward the end, Dad said, I got something on here big. I got something on here real big. And uh, he was pretty sure it was a snapping turtle. He said, Judy, get my knife. Get my knife. This snapping turtle. I don't want to lose my hand. And he pulled up a 20-pound catfish on the end of that trot line. Woo! Thank God. Yeah, yummy. Thank God it wasn't a snapping turtle. Okay? But you see, you get them catfish, you lay that trot line on the bottom because that's where catfish are. They're bottom feeders. And you put the smelliest, you ever use stink bait? You put the smelliest, stinkiest, nastiest, this most disgusting thing in the world on that hook. And they'll go for it every time. That's your sin, man. That's what you did. And, and the devil laid a, a, sna a, a snare and a trap for you. I may preach on that. Uh, thy right hand shall save me. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Thank you, God. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I know I, know I mentioned this last Sunday. The beauty about God's word is I could probably preach to this whole set of verses again next Sunday and get something entirely different out of it. But I'm telling you that none of us are here by our own righteousness. None of us are here. God holds us up with the right hand of His righteousness. So let me, let me give you an example. Okay? I just, 
I've, I've been electrocuted. That's not fun. I woke up 1 o'clock Tuesday morning to my house on fire. That's not fun. And house full of smoke. Not sure if there's a, not sure if there's a, like a fire in the living room or where it is. I don't know. But the thought of burning alive does not thrill me. So Nebuchadnezzar told everybody in his kingdom, when I unveil this, this new God and I play the music, if you don't bow, I will heat our furnace, our brick kiln furnace, seven times hotter than it's ever been heated, and I will throw you in it. Now, do you think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't believe that? No, they believed it. You think they were worried about that? Was I worried one o'clock Tuesday morning as I woke up and saw my house full of smoke? You know, there's always going to be somebody online who will tell you, why, why do you get worried when you, when you should be trusting in God? My goodness, I just woke up to a house full of smoke. Should I stand there and say, I trust God? Well, I do trust God. And God was saying, get out of the house, idiot. But that's kind of, that's kind of comments I get. And the, the nasty letters that I get even from people who used to come here. But anyway, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, okay, just making sure. When the music started, and now it's obvious who's standing, and who's bowing? Who's falling down? That's a picture of the, falling, of the falling away. I wasn't done. That's a picture of the falling away in 2 Thessalonians 2. That's how it's going to happen. And I believe on that day it's going to be so obvious who is on God's side and who isn't. Don't you think? And if you look out and there's a million people and a million people are laying down on the ground but three of them are standing up. If you've got 100,000 people as Hitler passed by all doing this and you got, you got a guy standing there as Hitler goes by the car like this, did you know that was against the law and that was punishable by death? If you did not salute Hitler as he went by, it was punishable by death. So you think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego just had the intestinal fortitude to keep standing all on their own. No. God was holding them up with the right hand of his righteousness. Somebody say amen. Father, thank you. It is not me. It has never been me here in this church. It's never been me. It will never be me. It will be you 
and, and you alone. Either holding me up or letting me fall. It will be you. Father, I trust you and I thank you, Lord, for your grace. And I thank you, Lord, for the book in the right hand of God. Bless it, Lord, in these people's hearts and minds. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen.